Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be solving a strain transformation problem involving measured strain values from a strain rosette to find the stresses in a pressure vessel. Now this problem here involves a cylindrical pressure vessel with a strain rosette placed around the center. We're applying pressure to the inside with a hand pump at increments from 50 psi all the way up to 400. Now our strain rosette is placed here and its configuration involves three strain gauges at three different angles. Now each strain gauge gives a different strain value. At each state we have three measured strain values given here. Through a gauge at 105 degrees gives 71 at 50 psi. 58 at 60 degrees and 17 micro inches, these are in micro, at 15 degrees. Now in order to get from these three measured strains to stress, we need to understand a simple principle about strain transformation. Say we have a cube here and we're applying two strains, epsilon x and epsilon y, along with a shear strain of gamma xy. Now these are called epsilon x and y because they go along with a coordinate system x and y here. This is your standard coordinate system. Now the concept of a transformation tells us that if we rotate this coordinate system at any angle theta, we can find the resultant state of strain based on the equation epsilon of theta is epsilon x cosine squared theta plus epsilon y sine squared theta plus gamma xy sine theta cosine theta. Now in our scenario we have three strain gauges and three angles so this is actually going to become a system of equations involving three states of plane strain. Now the fun thing about this problem is we actually start by knowing the values of plane strain but we need to work backwards to get the normal strain values. And that is done by setting up a system of equations which I have written out here. Giving us three equations with three unknowns. We can convert this into matrix form to allow us to solve for the normal strains. This tells us that the strain matrix epsilon xy and gamma xy is the inverse of the angle matrix multiplied by the set of three strain values measured. Now at each state of applied pressure we're going to have a different set of three normal strain values. Once we have the normal strain values we're going to calculate the principal strains by using Moore's circle. This equation states that two principal strains can be solved if we know the plane strains and shear strain. Now this only gives the equation for one principal strain but this equation is just plus or minus. To finally get the principal stress we're going to use Hooke's law which relates the principal strains and material properties to the experienced principal stresses. Now we have a lot of equations to calculate so let's go ahead and get started in Excel by calculating this inverse matrix. And this should actually be mega PSI because that's 10 to the 6. So this first spot in this matrix is going to be equals cosine squared of theta 1. So that's going to be cosine of radians times theta 1 which is 105. All of that squared. This sine squared term in the second column is going to be sine of radians times theta 1 squared. And the third column is going to be cosine of radians theta 1 times sine of radians of theta 1. So remember we have to convert these degrees to radians to do it in Excel. Now we simply drop these formulas down to calculate the entire angle matrix.
Now to actually get the inverse of this matrix in Excel, what we have to do is highlight a three by three block and type minverse, which stands for matrix inverse. We select the matrix we're taking the inverse of, close the parentheses. Now in Windows, we hit Control Shift Enter to perform an array operation. Now this is our actual inverse matrix. So now we're going to be using the inverted matrix to plug into this matrix equation to get our normal strains. So to get normal strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, and shear strain, at these values of applied pressure, we simply plug and chug by selecting a three by one block and say equals m mult, which stands for matrix multiplication. Let's select our inverse array as the first input. And now we're gonna select our three by one block at 50 PSI. Close that parentheses. Now let's go ahead and make our inverse matrix absolute referenced. So that way when we drag this across, we're not messing up our formula. Remember, let's hit Control Shift Enter to calculate the three by one block. Now let's highlight that block and drag it across. Now we're given normal strain at each value of applied pressure. So we've completed this step here in the equations. Now let's find the principal strains. We have two principal strains, epsilon P1 and epsilon P2. We're simply going to copy this formula over at each pressure value to calculate the principal strain at that state. So this is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 plus, now this is plus, but epsilon p2 is going to be calculated by subtracting that radical. So plus square root, whoops, I've selected everything here, plus square root of epsilon x minus epsilon y, epsilon x minus epsilon y, quantity squared plus the shear strain squared. Now let's not forget to divide that radical sign by two. We hit enter and that should give us our first principal strain. We simply drag that across and Excel automatically calculates the principal stain at each pressure stage. The same idea goes for the second principal strain. The only difference is we're subtracting that square root. So let's save some time and just drag the first principal strain down. We're going to have to redo some of these values here, but that's okay. So it's equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y divided by 2 minus square root of the difference of the normal strains, epsilon x minus epsilon y squared plus the shear strain squared. Now I kind of got lazy there and just copied it down, but I would recommend typing this out fully if you're first doing this. So now that we have this calculated, we hit enter and drag it across to populate the second principal strain at every pressure value. Now onto the final step, we're gonna be using Hooke's Law to calculate stress. We have two principal stresses, sigma P1 and sigma P2, at each pressure increment. Now this uses the material properties of Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Now let's just go directly by the formula and say sigma P1 is Young's modulus divided by parentheses 1 minus Poisson's ratio squared. Close that parentheses and multiply by the first principal strain plus the second principal strain multiplied by Poisson's ratio. Now let's make all the material properties absolute references so that once we start dragging this across, it's not gonna mess up our formula. So Poisson's and Young's modulus are absolute references. We drag this across and let it calculate. The second principal strain is a little bit different
but it follows the same idea. So we're going to say equals Young's modulus divided by 1 minus Poisson squared, Poisson squared, multiplied by the second principal strain plus the first times Poisson's ratio. Once again, let's make all of those material properties absolute reference. We hit enter and drag it across and let it calculate the principal strains from the measured stress values using a strain rosette at each pressure value. So we've done it. We've calculated principal stress from applied strain in PSI. Now, these numbers, how do we know they're right? Well, a good way to check is to actually use the pressure vessel theory, which states that in a cylindrical pressure vessel, we know that the hoop stress is PR over T, where P is the applied pressure, R is the radius of the pressure vessel, and T is the wall thickness. And we know that sigma axial is PR over 2T. We're given the radius and the thickness here, so let's actually calculate the theoretical values based on the material properties. So we know that hoop stress and axial stress will be the two principal stresses in this configuration. The hoop stress is simply P times radius divided by thickness. We're going to make these absolute. and drag that across and it should calculate everything for us. Now axial stress is PR over 2T or we could simply say it's one half of hoop stress. Now let's compare our values by using a percentage ratio of experimental divided by theoretical. So experimentally we calculated the pressure at 2589 but the theory said that it should be 3466. So let's drag those across. Now let's compare the axial stress measured in this vessel by dividing it by the theoretical. Ideally these numbers should be one if we were perfect and you're seeing we're getting some pretty lousy numbers. 75 percent is not the most accurate measurement. However something we have to consider is that this strain gauge was actually placed at about this location. If this were the center, it was placed about a quarter of the way from the middle. So that could have caused our strain values to be a little bit skewed. Another thing to consider is that when we actually performed this experiment, the strain gauges themselves were quite old. I believe they were about 11 years old, which is pretty old for a strain gauge, not to mention it's not like they were made of the most expensive and quality materials. Nonetheless, we were able to calculate the hoop and axial values using our equations for mechanics of materials. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was helpful to actually go into Excel and plug and chug these numbers and actually relate some of the equations to real ways of measuring stress in a pressure vessel. Stay tuned for more videos and thank you for watching.